hello everyone welcome back to our youtube channel uh this is a channel whereby we have been talking about money in the construction industry we have been talking about estimating and costing uh buildings we have been talking about taking off uh parts of elements of a building so that we can prepare for to come up with a bq uh, for all the first years, so maybe you have just joined college or university, uh, you have uh, joined the building, uh, a building course, maybe you're doing civil engineering or quantity surveying, and you're really wondering what really do, are you people saying, what is that taking off that you're talking about? Uh, taking off is the first process when we are coming up with a bill of quantities a bill of quantities is that document that shows us the uh, amount of money that we require to construct a building before we start the construction process we our client that is the owner of the building needs to know how much it will cost him to do uh, the building and like long time ago where people were just uh, coming up with money buying materials starting a uh, building process then uh after doing it for some time maybe they have done the foundation they have done the walling and even they are up to the roofing stage then the money is not enough they stop you have seen so many buildings that has ha, that have stalled yani they were being built then at some point there was no more money so the construction process had to stop and the client or the owner of the building had to go fast and look for more money so that they can come and complete the building. This is not the situation that we really want in the construction industry right now. And that was the origin of quantity surveying. Quantity surveying is this um, practice of coming up with the estimates and costs for buildings. It usually takes place uh, before we start the project, during the project, there is monitoring of the costs to, to ensure that we stick to the budget. And even after we have done uh, building the, the project, we monitor how much we used so that we can be able to plan for our future uh, buildings or future construction. So you can see that the construction industry has really revolved. A long time ago, uh, there, had, there was that challenge of uh, clients or owners of buildings just starting the building process. Then, most of the time, they do not really know what they are working with, the figures. So uh, that's where uh, the quantity surveying concept came up. So before we start any building, actually even before giving the tender uh, to a contractor, uh, whenever we have uh, mm, tenders being given, you have heard of tenders, eh? this is where uh, they, we want to know who is the contractor that is fit to do the construction. Uh, nowadays, we require them to give us, uh, we give them a bill of quantity so that they can go and fill uh, mostly we call it a bill of rates so that they can go and uh, just fill their rates or they can also t do taking off and also fill in their rates and tell us how much they'll be uh, doing the construction process for us as in we want to know how much it will cost us before we give them the tender so that once once we enter into a contract with them uh we expect them to deliver the building then us we will give them the money so i hope that is a bit clear for all the first year candidates for all the first year students uh you may not be doing this in any of your units but come to uh, second year the year maybe for there you will be doing this quite often so uh, it is good just to be watching you can familiarize yourself with some concepts here uh, that will make it easier for you when you get there and for all those who are doing this unit as per now this is the channel whereby we help you to revise for your exam so welcome so much this is a very uh it's a video that's has been really asked for by students. Uh, we want to know how to take off a septic tank. And today, that is what we will be talking about, a septic tank. What is a septic tank? So, a septic tank is a tank. Typically, it's underground, so it's below the ground level. Uh, in this tank, sewage from the houses or from a house is collected then it is allowed to decompose 
through bacterial activity before it is allowed now to drain uh -huh, through a soaker way. Uh, normally, when we have a septic tank, the next chamber that we shall have, we shall have a soak pit. A soak pit is just a, a hole that is dug. It has hardcore inside. Then, when water is directed there, it soaks into the ground. Now, we need a septic tank before we release sewage to the soak pit. Because remember, the soak pit is, a, is allowing the water to seep into the neighboring soil. Now, uh, just as, uh, as, as I have said, a, so, uh, a septic tank is where the sewage is collected. Now, uh, a septic tank has different chambers. And from the drawings here, you can be able to understand typically what a septic tank is. All right. Uh, whenever we have a plan of uh, an element, for example, uh, now right now we are dealing with a septic tank. We have a plan here and we have a section. We should be able first to understand the plan and the section so that we can be able to start taking off. All right. Uh, in this septic tank of ours, on the plan, we can see here we have some pipes. These are pipes. Let me just go through it. These are pipes which you can see in the section here. This one is the inlet pipe and this one is the outlet pipe. Uh, coming to the section to understand the septic tank, uh, a septic tank, we have said it's a tank, but it is underground. So it has a roof slab, then it has a, uh, this is the floor. This is the floor, it has walls, then it has the roof. All right, this floor, uh, it's made up of concrete. Then we have the walls, which are made of bricks. Then we have the pipes passing through the walls. Then we have the roof slab. All right. Then uh, inside the septic, we have two walls. One which is touching the floor, one, another one that is suspended. The one that is touching the floor is called the buffer wall. The buffer wall is usually touching the floor and it goes to some height. Then we have the suspended wall, which is called the scum board. From the... From the plan, we can see that these, these are the two walls. This one is the scam board, then this one is the buffer wall. These walls are coming into the brick wall. Okay, then we are told they are made up of RCC, reinforced concrete. All right, then uh, we are told even the roof slab is made up of reinforced concrete panels. Ratio 1 is to 2 is to 4 with 20 meters, 20 millimeters HPG. Metal. Then we had told that the height of the septic tank on the inside is 1500 mm. The thickness of the slab down here is 0 0.3 meters, 300 mm. Then we have, uh, you can see there is a uh -huh, CCS uh, with 40 millimeters HPG metal. We have some finish that have been done to the slab. Then uh, we are told the pipe is 100 millimeters diameter pipe. Right, we are just studying the, the section. Uh, these walls they are 100 millimeters thick each. Then the distance from the floor to this wall is 300 mm. The distance from the uh, ground level to the top of the roof slab is 300 mm. All right, then uh, this the roof slab is 100 millimeters thick. That one you have noted. Then on the on this uh, plan, we can see that the internal dimensions of the septic tank is one meters width, then three meters length. Okay, then the scum board and the buffer wall are coming into the wall at 150 millimeters. They are coming into the wall. Then uh, the outside dimensions of the septic tank is 1.6 meters. What have we not understood about the septic tank? Now, uh -huh, we have already uh, understood the plan and the section, what they entail. The next step that you require before starting any takeoff is having a checklist. Why do we have checklists when you are taking off? This is the guide to help you know uh, what you have done and what you have not done when you are taking off. A checklist is a, a, it's the point to note. It, it helps you remember the procedure that you want to follow. So that when you start taking off, you can go and check against it to see whether you have ticked everything. You have done everything. If you haven't done everything, you are not yet done taking off. So let us look at our checklist for taking off a septic tank. 
Okay, uh, whenever we are doing the septic sank, the process that you will follow, number one is the site clearance. Why do we need to clear the site? The site we have, mm -hmm, we have got to the site, maybe it's a field, maybe it's somewhere we had old structures, now we want to do a septic tank. You know, a septic tank is done in the ground, and maybe on that ground, there was something that was going on. Maybe there were plants, maybe there was an old structure, maybe there were shrubs growing. Okay, you need to clear the site. Uh, why do we clear the site? Uh, we clear the site of all vegetation. We clear the site of all shrubs and growths. We burn all, all, all of those arising. We demolish buildings on that site whereby we want to do the, the septic tank. All right, after clearing the site, the site clearance goes with the removal of the vegetable soil. Uh, if there was uh, grass growing, you remember that there's that loose soil that was feeding the grass. We usually remove around 50 millimeters depth of the vegetable soil. After removing the vegetable soil, the next step is reducing the level. Uh, like here, you can see from the ground level to the roof slab is 300 mm. We have cleared the site. We have removed the vegetable soil, which is 150 mm. So there is still a balance of 150 millimeters we need to excavate. So that excavating of that ground is what we call the reducing the level. So we shall reduce the level until we get its 300 millimeters from the ground level. Good. The next step is ad hoc excavation. We have said that a septic tank is a tank that is below the ground. We want space for this tank below the ground. We were having a plain ground. Uh, the ground was flat. It was full of soil. Now we want to dig, uh, to excavate that soil. We remove it. Then we create space in the ground so that we can be able to construct the tank. So we shall come and excavate. You see, the concrete starts from here to here. So we shall come and excavate all this area on the section or this area you shall draw a straight line up to the ground all that area and it is on in all this area that's rectangular okay so we shall have to uh, do the ad hoc excavation for example in this uh, diagram that we have uh, the length shall be 3.6 then we shall take the depth from here to the reduced level because we have already reduced the level up to the, uh, the slab so we shall excavate from the bottom the bottom of the floor to the uh, reduced level we remove all that soil all right so then the wind shall be 1.6 meters all right let's continue we shall come to taking off uh, then we shall go to concrete to the slab after we have dug this hole we have excavated the artwork the next thing is constructing this slab here down here after we construct this slab, we shall do the walls, okay? After we do the walls, the brickwork, we shall do the roof slab, okay? So you can see, uh, there is brickwork, then we shall come to panels for roof slab, these ones, eh? Then we have these panels for scumboard and uh, buffer wall. We shall uh, take them off. Then we shall come now to doing the finishing. We shall do the plastering. First of all, we shall do it inside the septic tank. Uh, we shall start with the floor, this floor, we shall uh, plaster here inside the floor. Then we shall do it around the scumboard. You can see all around the scumboard, we shall do the plastering. Then around the buffer walls, mm -hmm. then you can see uh, we shall do plastering all around. But there is this area in contact with the walls, we shall deduct. So we shall write it in the... We shall write it in the checklist so that you can remember to deduct this wall that, that is in contact with the wall, these linear meters. Because uh, we, have, we shall have measured all around the scumboard and even all around the walls. But now there is this one. We don't need plaster for here because it's in contact with the wall. Alright? So then the, we shall deduct for this length, this length, this length, and this length. Right, remember it's a hundred millimeters thick, so it's a hundred here, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. Okay, then we shall come to after we have constructed all that, we shall backfill the soil. Remember, we had done the hole from here or between.
guys now we shall begin uh taking off the septic tank uh we say that we shall start with the first step which is site clearance so we need to measure the area that we shall do for site clearance site clearance is always measured in terms of area on the same area we do site clearance we shall do the uh, remove the vegetable soil 150 deep, millimeters deep then we shall reduce the level because we need a reduced level of up to 300 millimeters uh, reduce removing the 150 150 millimeters with a uh, vegetable soil we need to reduce the level further by 150 so let's measure okay um in the measurements for site clearance we can see that the length of the septic tank will be 3.6 meters this is, we are told by the concrete below in the floor okay we are told that the length we have to we shall have to dig a hole which is 3.6 meters remember when you are doing measurements for uh taking off we are doing the bq the bill of quantities we do not have and any allowance for the site any other area that we shall use in the site that needs clearance will be done in the preliminaries preliminaries is that stage before construction begins when we are doing the bill of quantities and we are taking off site clearance we only do it for the area where the building or the element of the building like the septic tank will occupy we do not add any more allowance the only allowance that we give mostly is just the working space for example uh, once you measure the length on the surface like here it would be three meters because inside plus the walls but now we need to add the allowance for the concrete that will go below there so what will tell us the uh, the length so accurately is this section this concrete that is below here that hole that we shall uh, that hole that will be created in the soil so that the septic tank will occupy uh, is represented the length by this length of the concrete below here so the length shall be 3.6 meters the width shall be 1.6 meters all right then the depth shall be from the uh, the depth of excavation of the of the vegetable soil and the reduced level we measure it in area uh we only state the depth here okay in the description so in the description it shall be clear the site of all bushes shrubs undergrowth and burn all arising then remove 150 millimeters vegetable soil and deposit it in soil heaps 50 meters away from the site because vegetable soil we will not use it anymore we shall just take it away from the site we cannot even use it to uh, to refill to backfill because that one is a uh, bad soil it has uh, air spaces because of the vegetable material inside it so uh, that one we shall take it away from the site then excavate away 150 millimeters deep to reduce the level then this soil we shall put it in the cutaway heap in, in the yes in the cutaway heaps there's a heap of soil that is usually uh, in the site uh some distance from the where we are doing the construction that soil we can use it to backfill whenever we need it maybe uh you see after we have done the slab we shall need to reinstate some soil on top of it so this soil we can use it later because this is good soil it is it can be used for building but uh we need just to reduce the level so because the roof uh will get up to here i hope it is clear right then uh-huh so we shall measure the length and the wind because we have said site clearance is measured in terms of it's measured in terms of area then we shall do go to ex ad work excavation now that we have uh, the depth up to here up to here mm -hmm. the depth is up to there and we we have removed all the soil above there now we need to do the earthwork excavation we need to measure for this hole that we need uh -huh. we shall excavate so uh -huh. how do we measure this we take the length which is 3.6 then the width is 1.6 then the depth we shall measure it from below here up to here because we have already reduced 
the level so um, from here up to here how much will it be we have 300 below here 300 plus 1500 so this one shall be 1.8 this one shall be 1.8 mm -hmm. it will not be 2.2 it will be 1.8 why because we have already reduced the level in case you did not reduce the level in the first stage in case you did not reduce the level, you just clear the site and remove the vegetable soil. Now you need to excavate from that level up to below here. For us, we have already removed uh, the vegetable soil and we have excavated away the, up to the reduced level. So we will measure from the reduced level to below here. So we shall excavate a uh, ad hoc excavation from reduced level. Reduced level. Alright, so it shall be 3.6 length, width 1.6 and the depth is 1.8. We continue to the concrete below here. How do we take this one off or how do we measure it? The concrete here, uh, the length is 3.6, it's here. The width is 1.6. Then uh, the thickness of the concrete is 300 millimeters. And we know that whenever we are measuring concrete that is uh, 300 millimeters, you can take it, it off as a square meter in terms of square meter or in cubic meters. So I've used cubic meters. So length with the thickness, which is 0 0.3, we get 1.73 meter cubic is the concrete for the floor. All right, then we shall come to brickwork. When we are doing brickwork, it's brickwork all around. So we need to find the center line. Uh, if you have seen the, our videos on center line, how do we calculate center line? Uh, we usually take the external dimensions, then we deduct number of corners times the thickness of the wall. If you don't know how to calculate center line, then you go back to the video that we have uh, explained how to do the center line. Uh, just study then come back here and continue. So we shall just go over it mm, The external dimensions of this wall is the internal dimensions is 3 meters You add 230 to 30 for the length. So 3 meters plus 230 plus 230 is 3460 for the width the inside width is 1 meter you add 230 to 30 it shall be 1460 so the total external perimeter shall be 9840 then we shall less the number of corners which is 4 multiplied by the thickness of the wall which is 230 so we shall get 8920 so the center line which is the length now the width of the okay now we want to calculate the uh, volume of brick wall brickwork is calculated in volume so we shall take 8.92 then uh, we shall multiply by the thickness of the wall, which is 0 0.23, because it's 30 millimeters deep. Then the depth of the wall, uh -huh, brickwork, is 1.5. So we shall get 13.08. All right, let's go to the RCC uh, panels on the roof slab. Yeah, it's 100 millimeters deep RCC panels, which one is to 2 is to 4, using 20 millimeters HPG metal for roof, roof slab. Okay, so uh -huh, we shall take... Uh, the the length of the roof slab remember it's from here now to here how do we find that length uh, we shall take uh, the three meters inside plus the walls because the uh, the slab lies on the wall so we shall take external dimensions of the wall so three meters plus to 30 to 30 that is 34 60 so 3.46 then uh -huh, the wind is 1.46 because it's 1 meter plus 230 plus 230. 1.46. Then uh, the thickness of the slab is 0 0.10. So the volume of concrete shall be uh, 0 0.51. The same uh, panels are used for the scambled and buffer walls. Let's go to the next step, which is plastering of the septic tank. All right, so we shall start with the septic tank walls. The walls here needs to be plastered all around. So we shall find the perimeter of the inside face of the wall. So if we are told uh, this one is three meters, this one is one meter, three meter, one meter. What is the perimeter around? It's three plus one plus three plus one. That gives us eight. Eight meters is the length of the plaster inside around. So eight meters. Then the height of the uh, brickwork is 1.5. 
So plastering with uh, cement mortar, uh, 20 millimeters thick inside cement septic tank walls. We have found the area of the walls. All right, so we shall go to the floor. The floor is on the inside, we are plastering. So it's three meters by one meter. Three by one, we get three. Uh, then, so we shall go to uh, plastering for the scam board, all around the scam board. You can see the scam board from the section, we are seeing it like this. So this is the height. So we shall calculate this uh, length all around here. Then we shall multiply by the length here. All right. So this one from here to here, it's 1050. From here to here, it's 1050. Then this one is 100, 100. So the total perimeter of this uh, scam board is 2.3. Then we shall multiply by the length from here at the end to this end. We are plastering our only what is inside. Okay. So it's one meter. Then all around the scam board is 2.3. So the total area that we shall plaster for scam board is 2.3. Then we go to the baffle wall. The baffle wall, uh -huh, 1 meter. Then all around the baffle wall, this one is also 1.1050 height, 1050 height. Then this one is 100. All right. So uh, this one, unlike the scam board, it is 2300 minus 100 because for bottom here we don't need plaster. We shall only plaster up here. So it shall be 2.2. .2. Then uh, now that we have done plastering, we had already calculated plaster all around. Then we have done plastering. Uh -huh. There is this area of the wall that has been replaced by the buffer wall and the scam board. So uh, this area... It is uh, four sections, one, two, three, four, which is has a thickness of 100. So there are four. The thickness is 0 0.1. Then the depth is 1.05. The depth. Because it is this area that is in contact with the wall. This long part, the height is the one that is in contact with the wall. So uh, the total area is 0 0.42. Then now we shall go to backfilling of the artwork. Now that we are done with construction, uh -huh, we need to backfill the artwork. Uh -huh. So uh, for the artwork around the brickwork, uh -huh, it's this space. This space, you remember that we excavated up to here and the brickwork is up to here. So all this area, all this area around here, we need to to reinstate the soil and even here all this area uh -huh, we need to reinstate the soil mm -hmm. so that is what we are calculating all right all around the building so uh, we shall find the center line of reinstatement every center line usually take the external perimeter we deduct the number of corners and the thickness of that uh, reinstatement that we are doing. So the external perimeter is 3600 by 1600. We get a perimeter of 10400. Then we left the number of corners, which is 4. We multiply by this space here. How do we find this space here? We shall take the total length 3.6. We did that 3 meters plus 2, 30 to 30 for the wall, which is 3460. We get 140. 140 divided by 270. So here we have 70, here we have 70. So which when we are finding the center line shall be 4 times 70, which is 280. So the center line of reinstatement will be 10, 120. So we shall use the center line of reinstatement here, 10.12. Then we shall multiply by the thickness. Uh -huh. We shall multiply by this space, this one and this one. This one, 70 plus 70, 140. Then we multiply by the depth from here up to here, 1.60. So by that we shall have got all the soil up to up to here. We still have a hole uh -huh, from the ground level up to here. Now you need to backfill the soil here on top of the slab. So we shall take 3.6, then we shall take 1.6 for the width, then this, this thickness is 300. So it shall be 0 0.30. So the, the one, it shall be 1.73. Then uh, we shall need to take off the T-pipes. This pipe, T-pipes. You see, they look like theta T. How many are they? They are two. Then we need a ventilating shaft that will go 
to give us to to ventilate the septic tank and it shall be one number which is three meters all right so that brings us to the end of taking off the septic tank i know it has been so comprehensive you need to replay the video quite a number of times in case you there's something you just you haven't got you just need to replay it then you listen again in case you have any questions kindly ask them in the comment section uh, you can see that we have been posting our videos quite frequently we want to prepare you for exams so kindly uh, write the questions in the comment section and be able to see them and respond to them and if they need a video i will still do it and remember this is the best uh, the best channel for building and civil engineering quantity serving students so bring your friends revise together we you all need to pass uh, so bring them on board uh, kindly uh, like this video if you like it if it has been of help to you if you have uh, if you really like our content and you would want more kindly subscribe and also feel free to share this video get it to as many people as possible bring them on board and we shall continue to make good and better content for you so i'm so happy that you're here thanks so much for watching and kindly tell me what is the next item that you would want me to tackle or to talk about even in the building industry tell me what you really want to hear and surely we shall be able to tackle it and if that helps you anything for you so uh, have a good day and god bless you and i'll be waiting for your feedback